God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Woo! If you have never had a reason to have the Holy Spirit, it's so you can get a glimpse of heaven on earth. So you can get a glimpse of what it's going to be like in heaven while you're living on earth. You can live in heaven's terms while you're still on earth because of the Holy Spirit. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For that spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. See, the spirit of God knows those things that men can never know. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, lowercase s, but the uppercase Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So you see, when I see somebody filled with the Holy Spirit, I see someone who can begin to live in the light of eternity because they can see because they can't say any longer, no eye has seen, no ear heard. I have the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is giving me a little glimpse into that which is yet to come. And the Spirit in me is a con continuous, continuous magnetic pull to that part of my eternity, that life that's coming that I haven't yet experienced. Did anybody notice when you receive the Holy Spirit, suddenly you receive the like, kind of like a, the north needle on a magnet? You kind of just start, instead of just spinning around and, and around a magnet, you know, a, 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 a compass with no magnet around or with, with all kinds of magnetic forces, it just spins in circles. It doesn't know which way to point, but there's something about being filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you get the Holy Ghost suddenly powerful that that true north becomes focused and where you used to live in circles and run around wondering which direction to go now we have a reason to point to true north we know where north is we know where heaven is suddenly there's an impetus suddenly there's an inclination suddenly there's a calling suddenly there's a desire and suddenly we realize oh my goodness this is not all there is there's more. This is a little taste. It's an earnest, it's a down payment of my inheritance in heaven. Some people argue, well, don't, don't you know the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord? So why bother? Would you just read on? That's found in Deuteronomy 29, by the way, verse 29. Secret things belong to the Lord, yes. But those things which are revealed belong to us. So you see, are you ready to step into the country of the blind and be those who say, that's them, we're us. And we're not satisfied to see them stay blind if we can do something about it. There's a difference between us who can see and those who cannot see. Please never let anybody make you think that we're just blended in to the world. No, no, no. If we blend into the world, we've lost our salty savor and our light is extinguished. So in Jesus' name, we say, God, we're going to let the light shine in our hearts. And we, Lord God, are going to be your people who have that revelation that changes everything about us. Things revealed belong to me. Everybody say they, they belong to me. So I really believe that God has chosen to reveal heaven to us. And that must mean it belongs to us. And it belongs to our future generations. Now there's another argument that says, it's just too hard to understand. And people like that, they get caught up in Ezekiel's vision as he gropes for words and reference points to try to describe what he is seeing. They say... <clears throat> it's easier just to stay practical. Let's stay away from the ethereal. Oh, no, 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 no. I want somebody here to get hungry for the things we can't see. Oh, but I say, I say the hope of heaven is one of the most practical things we can possess. The hope of heaven. Anybody hear what I'm saying here today? This is why we need to study about eternity and understand that this life 
cheats you out if you're not careful of knowing what's to come and not being prepared for what's to come if you don't stop and we don't stop and focus on eternity. Let's not be like those who get caught up in that argument, but let's join those who say, Lord, what does the Bible say about heaven? It calls heaven an anchor. And can I tell you, these troubling times, there's never been need for an anchor like there is today. Oh, God, we need an anchor. God, we need an anchor. God, we need true north to pull the needle forward. God, we need, we need an anchor. And the Bible tells us the beautiful scripture says, we who have fled for refuge lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us. Who's already there? The forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become the high priest forever. Can anybody feel that? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anchor we have. Thank you for the anchor we have, Lord. I'm so glad this world is not my home, and I have that knowledge today. How many of you have almost fallen completely, uh, just fallen on your face thinking this world is really your home? And you realize that it's such a mistake because this world has no home qualities to it. But when you get in, fall in love with Jesus Christ and you get the understanding that there's another world out there, it makes you want to lay hold on an anchor. There's an anchor. You know what an anchor does? An anchor touches a place you can't see yet with your physical eyes, but you have the assurance that it's literally doing its job. It's holding a point that will never let go. That's what heaven has got to be to me, and heaven has got to be to you. God, don't ever let me lose my desire to understand what's at the anchor point. 